where do you think um, like a SIBO or a histamine issue would come from? Do you think like you can narrow that down to like one or two things? Is it, is it, I don't know, trauma? Is it overeating? Is it, where, where do you see it coming from? Yeah. Um, I, the whole uh, spoiler alert, I'm going to reveal like the big secret I reveal in my book. Um, mental, emotional, spiritual health is the key to gut health. And, and we, we can talk all about the gut brain connection and why that is. But when you're stressed out, depressed, have trauma, whatever, you are sending signals down your vagus nerve into your gut that tells your gut to not digest, right? We have our sympathetic nervous system, our parasympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic is fight or flight. And the analogy I use now that I live in Montana is like, let's say you're hiking, you see a grizzly bear, your fight or flight, sympathetic gets activated, you wanna run away. At the end of the day, when you're sitting by the campfire, parasympathetic is activated, rest and digest. The majority of us are living in that sympathetic response all the time. We wake up, we go straight to our phone, we look at our email, we look at our texts, our calls, we turn on the news and it's just a disaster. Then we have breakfast while we're moving around, while we're listening to the news and we're just constantly telling our gut, hey, don't digest. So when that sympathetic is activated, you don't make stomach acid. If you don't make stomach acid, you don't digest your food, you don't kill off bacteria. That, I, in my experience, has been one of the biggest reasons why SIBO happens. Mm -hmm. Anything that kind of impairs digestion or slows down your GI tract. So even something like, so I don't know that I could pinpoint it to, if I had to pinpoint it to one or two things, I would say the one thing is, for most of us, trauma as a child which then shuts down our digestion, which then can present a SIBO five years down the road, 40 years down the road. That's not everybody's story. I've met people that uh, one course of antibiotics and their gut is just bloated, um, uncomfortable, pain, nausea, and literally SIBO just onsets right after the antibiotics. Um, SIBO is a overgrowth of bacteria in your small intestine. So there's also some people that have been having GI symptoms that get COVID and their doctor tells them to go on a Z pack and they feel better for those five days because that Z pack is addressing the SIBO, but the SIBO comes back with a vengeance and usually worse after that. Um, chronic constipation, diabetes, um, motility issues are all reasons why um, SIBO starts and, and meds. Um, but in most people, and like, you know, and this is, I mean, patients that come to me are, are expecting to get the perfect diet, get the right supplements. So when I start talking about mental, emotional, spiritual health, I get huge red flags, huge, like, Hey, don't go there. Just give me the right supplements and everything will be fine. The way, the reason I can relate is because I was in denial. So I, I can usually spot someone in denial pretty quickly when you've been there for a long part of your life. Um, and like my trauma, like if you looked at my life, it wouldn't, you wouldn't call it trauma. Like I, my, um, parents gave me everything growing up. I was, I had, I did well in school. I had friends, sports, like everything was okay. But me being a first generation American, I never felt like comfortable. Like I never felt secure. I was constantly trying to fit in, um, trying to figure out what would make me fit in. And I was just completely insecure most of my life. And I learned that through a lot of therapy, like that, that's why I drank. That's what made me comfortable. And that, that was trauma and like it, it regular med school residency, Peter would have been, was like trauma. I don't have trauma, but it didn't matter. Like I didn't go to war. I didn't have something significant. Like I created the trauma. Um, so that to me are, are some of the, those are to me, some of the biggest reasons why something like SIBO can happen. Um, and it, it's, it's our environment. You know, it's, it's the meds, it's, it's our diets, um, it's the stress. And so a lot of people are at risk, right? 
Absolutely. And the, the trauma piece is, it's such an interesting piece to me. Um, I read the book, uh, the body keeps the score recently. And I mean, that's just the most, I mean, the most vivid, uh, explanation of trauma, right? Um, this guy's stories as a doctor and the patients he saw, just the things. But then, you know, there's that other part too, where it's like trauma can come in all kinds of different sizes and shapes. And you actually have this real interesting line in the book. I think about it all the time now, which is a lot of people's disease comes from when they were young and all they wanted was the love of their parent who didn't give it to them. So what would they do? They would cry. And now as adults, they still do that, but it manifests as, you know, diabetes or, uh, you know, what name the gut issue or whatever it is. They just are manifesting disease. And not to say that people are doing this on purpose, it's actually most likely become an unconscious thing, but that's the classic person who's just always sick, always coughing, always going to the doctor. And it's a form of trauma. And it, it started, like you said, because just like, not enough attention as a child. And the way that you learn to get attention is like, I'm not feeling well. And like in my, my, my office in Chicago is next door to my mom's office. So I always, I tell a lot of people, I'm like, usually it's our parents that screw us up. And so she gets super pissed when she hears me say that, but, um, cause they, 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 they are doing their best, but my, I mean, my parents were also just trying to survive in this country. Like they had nothing. Um, so, you know, for all of our parents are doing their best. I mean, we're all doing our best at, at the moment for where we're, what we're capable of. And it, yeah, it's very real. Like, and it, it's hard to accept, like for me, it was extremely hard to accept that this could have started when I was a kid, just from feeling insecure and, and, um, that it presented as something as significant as alcohol issues. And for, for people like for them to, um, accept that, like my SIBO could be due to like the toxic relationship I've had with my wife or husband or my parents or my job. And it, it's, it's, I get why people throw up like the red flag and, and, and it's, extremely difficult to address. It's painful. It's way easier to find the right diet supplements. Um, and what I've found over the years is also people that they're in mental, emotional, spiritual health is balanced. Healing the gut is really easy. SIBO, dysbiosis, candida, low stomach acid, all of that stuff goes away quickly. When there's that internal struggle and our brain is sending that signal down our vagus nerve to our gut, your gut is that whole tube is lined with a nervous system called the enteric nervous system. Mm. It's 200 to 250 million neurons. It, it's more, there's more than like your brain. So when that nervous system is constantly being fed signals and you don't know it, and that's, that's the, probably the worst part about it is like, you don't know that what you're feeling as a kid is, damaging your gut. And then that's going to present as autoimmune disease when you're in your twenties or something. Um, you don't like necessarily get the symptoms or you, you assume the symptoms are normal. Like, Oh yeah, I just, that's what I deal with is abdominal pain. Um, so it's, it's to me, the most important part of functional medicine is the most important part of health. At the same time, it's the most difficult. 